Bible, Mark chapter 5. Amen. Now I kind of feel bad. I should have had a preacher at least pray or something. <laughs> Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 in your Bible. <clears throat> I'm thankful for the power of Jesus in our lives. I'm thankful that what he did in the New Testament and the Old Testament. I'm also thankful that he can do today as well, amen. I'm thankful that he took a lost, hell-bound sinner and he turned him to a heaven-bound saint, amen. I'm thankful for that today. I'm thankful it didn't take a while for me to get saved. I'm thankful when I called upon the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I was saved immediately and I look for that and I see the testimony of that with these people that time and time again when they called upon Jesus, when they touched the hem of his garment, when they reached out to Jesus, Jesus didn't wait around. He didn't drag out the healing process. He made it immediate. Amen. And I'm thankful for that healing process, not only being immediate, but I'm also thankful that it was everlasting. Amen. They didn't get their diseases back the next day. No, it stayed like that forever. Amen. All the way into glory land. And I want to talk about when Jesus passed by today. I'll be quick. I'll be fast. I'll be brief. You stay awake with me and we'll get through this. Amen. If you look at Mark 5, Mark 5, verse number one, and they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, Immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him, and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And the world may not be doing that openly, but I tell you, they're doing it privately, amen. Because the devil, he's oppressive. He sending them all to hell, and they are begging, begging for someone to show up on their doorstep and reach them for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And the devil's oppression, it's day and night, it's time and time again, it's over and over again, it never ends. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried, with a lot, and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. I believe this man had been tormenting himself in the caves when he saw a storm over the Sea of Galilee. And I believe that he saw Jesus get up on top of that boat and say, peace be still. And I believe he saw that storm go completely silent. And I believe he saw that what Jesus could do on that storm, he could also do in his life as well. And Christian, you are a testimony to the lost world around you as well. Because if they can see what Jesus has done in your life, hey, maybe they can think that Jesus can do the same in theirs as well. You be a testimony for God. You let your salvation, you let your, your joy, your testimony shine bright for God. Because you don't know how many wild men of Gadarenes are watching you today, amen. And you don't know how, what family member is eyeing you up. You don't know what co-worker is watching you to see if you got the real deal. And you look at this right here. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Verse 11. Now, we're there, now there were there nigh into the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him saying, send us into the swine that we may enter unto them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave and I love that Jesus has victory, has power only ever over any demon, amen, over any devil, over anything the devil can throw at us. I'm thankful that God, hey, is the champion, amen, and that with him, we are on the winning side. Now, again, in verse 12, and all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter unto them. And forthwith, Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place in the sea. There were about 2,000, were choked in the sea and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city in the country and they went out to see what it was was done now i read this earlier a, a, a few months ago and i love this right here these were jews having a, a herd of swine 
They weren't even supposed to have pigs to begin with right there. So I think Jesus probably smiled a little bit and said, yeah, you can go into those pigs. And all 2,000 of them went into the sea, amen. Those Jews got a little bit of punishment right there because they weren't supposed to have anything to do with pigs. And Jesus sent the devils into them and sent the swine over the cliff, amen. So he got rid of them for them, amen. And, uh, and, they, came to, and, they, and they come to Jesus, verse 15, and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Hey, guess what? When Jesus changed your life, it should have made some people afraid about it, amen? It should have scared your old friends, amen? They should have seen a major difference in your life. It should have frightened them. And uh, look at this right here. They were scared, and they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee. Great things the Lord hath done for thee. I'm thankful when Jesus passed by, this man was changed, he was healed, and guess what? He wanted to cling to Jesus. Why is it so many people make a profession of faith, but they want nothing to do with God afterwards? I feel like that's a bit of a false profession when you don't want to spend time with the master who healed you, who changed you, who took you from hell and put you toward heaven, amen? Why would you not want to spend time with that man? And uh, again, I love this statement. Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord have done for thee and have had compassion on thee. I'm thankful Jesus had compassion on me, amen. I don't care if you were a drunk or a little preacher's kid, goody tissue, amen. Hey, God has had compassion on all of us, amen. And he's changed all of us. And hey, my sin was sending me to hell and your sin was too, amen. And I'm thankful that God has changed our lives, amen. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. Guess what? Just because I have a more simple story than the atheist who got saved out of the gutter doesn't mean that I can't publish and make men marvel about what God has done for me. Amen. It doesn't matter what story, what background you come out of. Amen. God wants to use your story to make men marvel. Amen. You use that story for God. And that's just, that's the introduction. Amen. So I just, I love that passage because I, I love how messed up this man was. Sin, the world, the devil had made this man a cave dweller, had made this man bound with chains, had made this man cut himself. We see a lot of cutting in our, in our, in our days today, amen. There's so much satanic oppression, and it may not be as open as this right here, but it's, it's in the houses of the day, amen. I remember dealing with it with the teenagers, having young little girls come up and say, I'm cutting myself at home. There's plenty of that oppression nowadays as well, and I'm thankful that Jesus healed those people in the Bible and he can heal the people of the day as well, amen. You'll be a witness, you'll be a light, you'll be an influence to this lost and dying world around you. They need Jesus still. And look at this right here in verse 21. And Jesus, and when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jarius by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. I love this man's cry. There, you see multiple times in the, in the New Testament. Remember the women with the, the, Gentile, uh, the Gentile woman that the Lord said, Hey, it's not fit for the, the dogs to receive the bread meant for the Jewish people, amen. And she said, Truth, Lord, but I'll take the crumbs, whatever you can give me. And I, I love these parents that would do anything. This man, he was a ruler. He was a man of power, of position. But when it came to his little girl and her need for healing, he got on his knees, he got on his face and said, help my daughter, Lord. Hey, if you've got kids that are not right with God, if you've got kids that are off the beaten path, hey, they may be saved, but they're as backslidden as all get out. Don't you give up on your kids. Hey, you get on your knees, you humble yourself. You beg God to save your kids, amen. You beg God to get a hold of your kids. Don't you ever give up on your family, amen. This man humbled himself. He got on his knees. He begged God, God, heal my little girl. And Jesus went with him. I'm thankful that when we ask, Jesus comes. Amen. I'm thankful that he's a cry away. He's a plea away. You humble yourself. Hey, he shows up. Amen. I'm thankful when the Bible says, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to thee. Amen. Hey, that's a promise, church. That's a promise. Draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to thee right there. And he besought him greatly. My daughter, my little daughter, lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay 
lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, verse 24, and much people followed him and thronged him. And here's where I'm going to finish it up right here. And Jesus, verse 25, and a certain woman... And a certain woman, and there's a lot of certain women and a lot of certain men who are struggling with this same thing, a disease, a plague that they're struggling with since the day that they were born. We came out of the womb speaking lies. And it's a disease that we all need healing of. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but grew worse. I think of this right here. She had a sickness, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've had this sickness for years upon years upon years. This world is corrupted with it, and we're struggling all with it until we got Jesus. Romans 7, 14. Go to Romans 7, 14 in your Bible. Romans 7, 14. You with me still? Say amen. amen. Romans 7, 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. Paul says, but I am carnal sold under sin, but guess what? I'm glad. Hey, I'm glad on uh, April 20th. No, May 5th. Actually, it's May 5th. Church started April 25th or 28th. I'm glad on May 5th, 2010, that I was over there sitting right where Miss Tiff was. I had my heat, my hands on the grip of that chair, and preacher did an altar call the second week of our church, and I came up, and I went from sold under sin to bought by Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm thankful that he bought me. He bought me with the price of his precious blood, and I'm thankful that, hey, once saved, always saved. Amen. And I'm thankful for that today, and I see right here Romans 7, uh, verse 14, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Verse 15, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform it, that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. All that confusing thing says is this right here. Hey, I'm a sinner. I'm always going to be a sinner, but I'm thankful that when I get to heaven, I get a perfect body. Amen. I'm thankful while on earth, though, that I got on my knees. I asked Jesus Christ to save me. He saved me. Amen. I'm bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. This woman right here, she had to realize that she had a condition. Amen. That she had a sin problem. That she had a disease. That she had an issue that no physician, no doctor, no anybody could heal her from it. Amen. Only Jesus Christ. And we got a lost and dying world out there that needs to hear about the Jesus Christ. Amen. Because no religion, no good works, no belief in myself is ever going to save me. Amen. Only Jesus Christ. She had a sickness. Number two, she had suffered greatly looking for a cure to her condition. Man and his wisdom and his advice had only hurt her. It had been hurting people since Adam sinned in the garden. Reliance on ourselves and our wisdom will always leave us worse off. And I don't care if it comes to salvation, which will lead you to hell if you don't believe in that way. But also it comes to when we decide to take this Bible and twist it around and twist it up into what we want it to say. That will hurt you just as bad as well, amen. You, hey, if the Bible says it, don't change it, just do it, amen, and uh, let's see right here, and uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 19, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness unto God, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us, 1 Corinthians 1, 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish, they're perishing, it's foolishness to them, but unto us which are saved, it is the power power of God. Amen. I'm thankful for this black book. Amen. That says a lot of stuff that don't make sense, but I'm thankful if I read it enough, understand it enough with the power of God. Amen. It will save me unto salvation. Amen. I'm thankful for that right there. Number three, she had heard of Jesus. Number one, she had a sickness. She had to realize her condition. Number two, she had suffered greatly at the hands of man at trying to do it man's way. And number three, she had heard of Jesus. She had heard of Jesus. No doubt. If you read over here, let's go look at this right here actually um and i wrote this down somewhere <laughs> 
Anyway, you look out throughout the Bible, all these people that got healed by the Lord, what did they do? They went and published it. They went and proclaimed it. They went and told others about what Jesus had done for them. And she had heard of Jesus. No doubt the stories of Jesus had spread to her town as well. People that Christ had already healed may have been in her town proclaiming like that madman of Gadarenes. How he had healed the cripple at Capernaum and the possessed man again at Gadarenes. King Agrippa also heard about Jesus. But when he heard, all he could say was, almost thou persuadest me. The saddest words right there. Came so close to believing in Jesus and that almost sent him to hell instead right there. I'm glad that when she heard of Jesus, she went looking for him as well, amen. So many people hear the gospel. So many people hear the truth. So many people are lost in our churches today, and they hear the truth every every week, week in, week out, and they just keep on hearing it, but they don't apply it. They don't take action on it. I'm glad when this woman, she heard of what Jesus could do. She realized her condition could not be healed by anybody else but Jesus, and when she went looking for him. So many people hear many things and change nothing. Nothing. This woman heard what Jesus had done and where he was, and she went looking. It required determination, and it required humility. It required humility. By this time, her condition had no doubt left her body weak and destroyed. I can imagine as Jesus is walking with a throng of people. She is crawling across that ground, desperately trying to reach Jesus while people are stepping on her and kicking her. She's not only walking through people, she's walking on the dirtiness of those streets back then. You imagine all the animals that had gone through that area and left their waste all through that area. And they weren't hygienic like us, man. It didn't go down the toilet drain. It went out to the street, amen. She was going and crawling through all this garbage, all this filth. All this, and she did it with humility, and she went over there just hoping, just believing that Jesus could heal her. Just I believe in that Jesus could heal her. I'm glad that she went. Hey, it says James 4.10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. He shall lift you up. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. And I'm thankful that when I humbled myself, God lifted me up all the way to heaven. Amen. Someday, I'm thankful for that right there, because I was in the gutter, and this woman realized right here, we got to realize that to ourselves, that, hey, guess what? Without Jesus, we're in the gutter as well. Amen. That's where we're at. That's where we'll always be. We stink. Our clothes are as filthy rags. Amen. And until we realize that, hey, we're hopeless, we're doomed, we're destroyed, and we're on our way to hell. She found Jesus for uh, Isaiah 55, 6, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. That comes to our salvation. That comes to just our walk with God as well, amen. Hey, don't make God keep on pounding on your door, Christian, to get you in, hey, to get you in tune with him. And the same goes for the lost person as well. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. She had this opportunity and she took it. That may have been the only time Jesus went through her town and she took it. What if she decided, well, I'm not feeling good. Or you know what, there's too many people out there. Or you know what, I may get dirty. No, she went out there when she had an opportunity. And I, I don't know when's the last time. I don't know if we're all saved in here or not. But hey, we only have so many opportunities with Christ, amen. We don't know when God's going to finally stop knocking on our door, don't you? Hey, if you're not sure about your salvation, get it settled, amen. And that's the same with our sins as well. Why do we, start, why do we keep on just pushing off and pushing off and saying, oh, I'll take care of it later, just like lost people with their salvation? Why do we keep pushing? How long are we going to keep on tempting the Lord Jesus? How long are we going to keep on pushing off that sin that we need to get right with God? How long are we going to avoid this altar and get on our knees and on our faces and beg Almighty God to forgive us of our sins, amen, and help us get victory over that sin? How long are we going to push God off? She found Jesus. She had an opportunity and she took it. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Number five, she believed in his power. She had faith. She believed in his power, and she had faith. Verse 28, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be what, church? Whole, amen. Somebody reading an NIV in here or something. I, I'm teasing, of course. I'm teasing. Hey, amen. All right. Let's say here, and uh, I may be whole. I'm thankful that this woman believed, amen. All it takes is the faith of a mustard seed to move mountains, amen. And I'm thankful that, guess what? I didn't have to climb Mount Everest to meet Jesus, amen. I'm thankful I didn't have to go and, you know, uh, build 20 different crosses across America to uh, get my salvation, amen. I'm glad I didn't have to be faithful to church for 20 years straight to get Jesus, amen. I'm glad I didn't have to read my Bible for 40 years straight 
great or give a thousand dollars to the church every month to meet Jesus. Amen. I'm thankful that all I needed to do was ask Jesus into my heart by confessing my sins, realizing he's the only one that can take them. Amen. I'm thankful that it's easy and that's so easy to get Jesus. Amen. It just takes a little bit of humility and humble pie. Amen. I'm thankful for, hey, Jesus uh, she had power, uh, she believed in his power, she had faith. Romans 5, 1 says, therefore being justified by what? Faith. Being justified by faith. Point six, she received immediate healing. She received immediate healing. Like I said, amen, I'm glad it's not a process. I'm glad that it doesn't take 20 hours, three weeks, four years, 20 years. I'm glad that when I asked Jesus into my heart, when I asked for healing, he saved me, amen. It was immediate, it was in instantaneous, and I'm thankful for the in instantaneous healing of Christ, amen. And number seven, she felt the healing. She felt the healing. Verse 29, and straightway, look at this, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. I'm thankful for the straightway of Jesus' healing was dried up, and she felt in her body that was she was healed of that plague. It worries me when someone says, I got saved, but nothing really changed. Nothing really happened inside of me. Hey, that's a big alarm bell in my book right there. Hey, when you get saved, when you get saved, just like... Uh, when you get saved, you realize, you realize there's something different. I went from the old man to the new man. I was indwelled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Romans 8, 16, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I'm thankful when I'm, when I'm struggling that the Spirit reminds me, hey, you're mine, amen. You're mine, amen. Hey, when I messed up, I'm thankful the Spirit, hey, you messed up, but hey, you're still mine, amen. I'm thankful that when I'm going through a struggle, when I'm going through a valley, when I'm, or I'm on the mountaintop, amen, that I'm just constantly getting reminded, hey, you're mine, amen. I'm thankful for that promise in the book, amen, you're mine. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit of God. Number eight, and lastly, hey, we're done, church. It's almost there. She testifies about what was done to her. She testifies about what was done to her and his disciples. Uh, look at verse 30. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? I'm thankful that Jesus took notice of a woman who was on the ground in filth and disgust and nobody else wanted anything to do with her, but guess who took notice? Jesus. I'm thankful that Jesus took notice of little old me, amen, 10 years ago now, amen, almost 11. Hey, I hope you're thankful as well that Jesus took notice of you. I hope you never get over the fact that, guess what, you didn't deserve heaven. You didn't deserve salvation. Hey, but guess what? God gave it to you anyways, amen. I'm thankful for that right there. I'm thankful it's never too late. I'm thankful Miss Jennifer showed up to church a couple years before, and God worked on her, and God prodded on her, and God didn't give up on her, amen. And she got, she got her salvation taken care of, amen. I think of Miss Peggy as well. I'm thankful that, guess what? God didn't give up on her as well. I'm thankful that, hey, I made profession of faith when I was a young man, and all through my teen years until I turned 16, I struggled with my salvation. I didn't know. I had nightmares about hell. I struggled and struggled. And str I'm glad God didn't give up on me, amen. I'm glad that he was patient with me. I'm thankful for the patience of God in my life, amen. She felt the healing. She testified about what was done to her. And uh, Jesus said, who touched my clothes? Verse 31, and his spiritual disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and, say, and sayest thou, who touched me? Verse 32, and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, verse 33, I love this right here. But the woman fearing and trembling. I'll tell you what, it should have shook you up a little bit when you got saved, amen. When you realize I'm, I was on my way to hell and now I'm on my way to heaven, amen. Hey, I was doomed to eternity with the devil, but now I'm with Jesus forever where no tears shall be shed. Hey, where I'll receive crowns of glory, where I'll get to see my family again, amen. Hey, it's a good thing to be saved, and I hope it shook you up. I hope you got a little excited about it. I hope it made you happy. I may hope you made it like the layman who was leaping up and down for joy, amen. I hope it excited you as a saved person. I love the part, fearing and trembling. She realized what was done to her was no small matter. It was exciting. It was liberating. All the years she had suffered through this horrible disease, and now it was gone forever. Christian, when's the last time you dwelt on your salvation? You just got a little excited. You shed a little tear about it. You just thought about what God has done for you, amen. 
No matter how many times I sin, no matter how many times I mess up, no matter how many times mis- mistakes I made or dumb things I say or stupid things I do or how many times I forget to read my Bible and pray or how many times, hey, I'm fake sick to go to not go to church, amen. I'm thankful. Hey, we. I know we've got some guilty sheep in here, amen. Hey, right here. I'm thankful that no matter what, I'm still saved, amen. I still belong to the king. That woman, she probably went and messed up some more after that, but guess what? She stayed healed, amen. It was forever and ever and ever, and I'm thankful for that right there, that no matter what I do, I belong to the king, and I'm healed forever, amen. And someday I'll be be in glory land, amen, praising him. And uh, Mark 5.20, the man who had been healed of demons was out proclaiming what God had done for him. And then Mark 8, go to Mark 8. Mark 8. Mark 8, verse 32. Mark 8, verse 32. Actually, go to Mark 7. Mark 7, verse 32. Mark 7, verse 32. And they bring him unto, uh, unto him, one that was death, and had an impediment in his speech, and they beseeched him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue and looked up to heaven, and he sighed and saith unto him, uh, if I, <laughs> that is, be opened, amen. And the straight way... I love straightway, amen. I love that straightway happened, amen. When Jesus touched him, his ears were opened and the string of his tongue was loosed and he spake plain and he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more, a great deal, they published it. Hey, so much the more, Christian, publish it, amen. So much the more, publish what Jesus has done for you, amen. Whether you be at work, whether you be at home, whether you be out in the street or seeing a cash register, register, cashier at a register, amen. You publish what God has done for you. As Christians, I struggle with myself. It's so hard to understand, so hard to comprehend how we can be so apathetic about what God has done for us, amen. How we can be so scared and so fearful about spreading the good news, about talking about what Jesus has done. Hey, that woman who was healed of an issue of blood, that man who was caught, went from being lame all of his life to walking again. I bet you they never stopped talking about what happened to them, amen. I bet they never stopped getting excited about it. I bet... And three years down the road in the middle of the night, they'd wake up crying about what God had done for them. So why can't we get excited about what Jesus has done for us as well, amen? How Jesus has healed us. How Jesus has taken us from death to life, from hell to heaven, amen. Where, what's our excuse? We've received way more of a blessing than they ever did, amen. We, hey, hey, life, hey, life as a cripple is only for 60, 70 years most, amen. But life in eternity, that's forever, amen. Life in heaven, that's forever. So why aren't we excited? Why aren't we publishing it? Why are we, when there's sign ministry to be had, when there's door knocking to be, and guess what, church? I'm talking to the choir right here. I'm talking to myself, amen. I struggle with it just as much as we all do, amen. But why is there such a, why is there such a struggle when we do sign ministry or tracks or door knocking or visiting? Why aren't we all just jumping to the chance to be doing it? We've got so much to publish, to be thankful for. God has done so much for us. Let's not let them down now, amen. Jesus died on the cross for us. Let's publish until he comes, amen, and gets us again. I, again, I can't say again. I say this pretty much every message, but, and sometimes I don't live it, but I really do. I want to I hear that, thou well done, thou good and faithful servant. I really want to hear it. I don't want to be that shameful Christian in the corner that just looking at my feet because I'm ashamed as Paul and I, we're never going to come up to Paul. For, I mean, it, it, we, it's, it's achievable, but the likelihood of it happening, I'm getting stoned and all that stuff, I, hopefully it doesn't happen. But it, there's no way we're going to come close to that man. But I still want to be able to know that I ran my race. I look at Brother Bob, amen. Look at Brother Bob. That man's testimony was so strong, they left a track in his hand as he was in the coffin. Because he was so known for being a witness for God. I, wanna, I want them to be able to feel good about sticking a track in me as well. Sticking a track in my tomb, our tomb, coffin as well. Amen. Christian, God has done so much for us. Let's publish it. Let's spread it. And let's be thankful for it. Let's pray. God, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for all you've done. We love you. I pray, God, that you'll just help us, Lord, to publish what you've done for us. Help us never to get over what you've done for us. Help us never to be ashamed of what you've done for us, Lord, of who we are now. We're children of you. And God, if anyone's not saved in here, Lord, I pray they'll take this opportunity now 
take this opportunity now and accept you as their Savior, God, because we never know when it's over. And God, I pray, God, that you'll, you'll help us, Lord. Help us to stay close to you. Help us honor you. Help us to live for you. I pray for altar call now. I pray you'll bless it. And uh, Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, piano's going to play. Altar's open. If you need to do business with God, use the front row. Grab us uh, a, 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 a spot at the altar. Do what you need to do. Altar's open. Front row's open. Come and do business with God. Could have nothing to do with this message today. If you just come and do business with God, it's never a bad idea to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. If you're not saved in here, stop pushing it away. Stop pushing away. Hey, God is not going to give you doubts about your salvation. Amen. And you know what? If you're struggling with your salvation, if you're not sure, at least talk to someone about it. Don't wait till it's too late. If you got sin in your life, get it right. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace, Lord. Thank you for the message, Lord, the challenge. Thank you for the day that you passed by my life. Lord, I thank you for just my son. I pray you'd bless him. Lord, I thank you for his fire, his zeal. And Lord, I just thank you for these precious saints. Lord, I pray you'd just bless in an amazing way. Thank you for all that you do for us. I pray you'd give us a good week. I pray you'd help us and strengthen us. Lord, help us to be what we're supposed to be. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Did he leave? Oh, good. Yeah, good. I want you out of here. I want to talk. And so, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the.